Hey everybody, welcome back to today's video. Today here on the Tanner Holmes YouTube channel, we have a very fun and exciting Throwback Thursday vlog for you. Now, if you guys are new to my YouTube channel, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Tanner Holmes, and I am a 17-year-old outlaw cart and sprint car driver from here in the Pacific Northwest. Now, I also absolutely love dirt racing, and I love to bring you guys, the viewer, along with me throughout this journey through all of these vlogs. So if you guys enjoy racing content and you've not yet already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Our goal is to hit 40,000 subscribers by the end of 2020. Right now, we are at 37,000, so close to our goal. I think we can definitely hit it by the end of the year. Now, like I said just a minute ago, today is a Throwback Thursday vlog, which pretty much means we are gonna be looking at an old piece of content of mine or an old race that was filmed, and we are gonna be re-watching it together. Now, the footage that we are gonna be taking a look at today comes from the Red Bluff Outlaws, and if you've been following along with my journey since the beginning or even any of my recent videos, I say it all the time, my favorite racetrack in the world is Red Bluff. Red Bluff is this tiny indoor bullring racetrack located in the Pauley Davis Pavilion in Red Bluff, California on the Tehama County Fairgrounds, and this place has made some of the best dirt racers in the nation. When everyone is doing nothing in the wintertime, sitting on their couch at home or working in their race shop to prepare for 2020, a lot of outlaw cart kids and guys like me are at the Red Bluff Outlaws to run 13 races a season to keep our skills sharp and still prepare for that upcoming year, but we really just never stop racing. So that is why I like the Red Bluff Outlaws. I truly think it has made me into the racer that I am today. And I started racing there back in 2010 and have not missed a single race since. So I'm going on 11 years full time at Red Bluff. Quickly, to give some context to the race that we are going to be watching today, it is the 2017 Tyler Wolf Memorial. Now, the Tyler Wolf Memorial is one of the biggest races we have all season. Also, this was my first year moving from 250 to the open class. And if you're not familiar with outlaw carts, the open class is the big boy class. This is where you're going to see the most intense racing, door-to-door -door action, huge slide jobs, all of that in one class. So we are gonna watch it together here. At the time, I was going for my first career open A main event win, and I like to call this race the race that got away from me. So we are gonna put the headphones on and we are gonna watch the action from Fast Four Media. I start front row outside. Red Bluff Outlaws, we got them racked. We got them stacked and we got the grandstands packed. Tyler CV starts inside on the pole. Four. We are three. Good start on the bottom of the racetrack for the 91 of Tyler Seavey. He'll lead him down the back straightaway with Tanner Holmes in tow. Seavey leads lap number one. The racetrack is absolutely phenomenal. Super slick. Bottom and top are both even. Really good racing happens here. And now we got one turned around in turn number three, the yellow flag waves. RJ Johnson, the car around in turn three. The yellow will come out. Tyler Seavey, your leader. So we're running second. I remember uh, being pretty nervous starting up front in the A-Main event, also knowing we had a chance at competing for the win. So I had to be perfect if I wanted to pick up this victory. Great restart. I had to even slow up a little bit. It was so good. Pretty good restart there for the 18 t of Tanner Holmes. Look to the inside of Tyler Seavey, but not able to make anything happen. Here comes Jesse Caldwell through the middle. We are right there. I think Tyler may be expected to pull away, but me and Ren Everhart Ren Ever and I were right there. Oh, wow. Yellow's going to come out the 8JR. Brian McGann Jr. has turned around backwards in turn one. So some quick yellows you guys are seeing. Going to have a single file restart here. I was really good on the top side. I mean, we're right there with the 91. He had to have started to hear me a little bit as I got close. Yeah, the 18T at Holmes really fast down the straightaways. He's got some great straightaway speed. If he can set up the 91 CV. It's hard to see, but you guys need to look at my uh, front end, right below my front bumper. Keep an eye on it. There's something that is dangling. 
pretty much what it is, it's a piece of lead, and at the time I was a little bit lighter, so in order to make weight, I had to have weight on my race car, and one of the great things about that is then you can place it where you want to have, you know, left side weight or right side weight or front end weight, and so we had it on the front to try to keep the nose down so I wasn't popping wheelies. So keep an eye on that, it starts dangling and it actually ends up falling off. So that was one of the crucial things this race that kind of got the announcers worried. I didn't even notice it really at the time, but if you keep an eye on it, you'll see it um, kind of flopping around. Might have a shot at his first career open win. You can see it right there. Jesse Caldwell. Lachance was rolling the bottom incredibly well earlier on in this heat race and he's doing the same here in the main event. Pretty stacked field, Tyler C.V. lead, and Caldwell's in third, Brandon Lachance four, Chase Hills, Hills right Caldwell, there, Lachance, Foster, Hill Park, Logan C.V. I mean, Ryan a bunch Foster's of outlaw car legends. Right this is a typical A main at Red Bluff. Jake Park for seven. We've got some debris in turn one, debris in turn one. There it goes. Chase Tanner Holmes has some issues. Look, you can see it right on the something was hanging see right on the track. That car, and whatever it is fell out in turn number one oh. and just ran it over. And then I but go and run over my own debris. Unbelievable. You know what? That, that is a weight. That is actually the weight that bolts on to the, the front of the chassis, I believe. Yeah, see how heavy it is when Mike picked it up right there. Yeah, I saw it that hanging the nose down. Weight. Saw it hanging down for about three or Not four good. laps. And it, that exact same thing happened to Logan Sebi a few years back at the Topher Classic. He won the race. The nose weight came off and was DQ'd at the end of the night. So what they're saying is they were worried now that since I lost that nose weight, if I won the race or even ran second, I might possibly be DQ'd because I would not make weight. So I don't remember the exact circumstances. If I would have still been fine, I want to say we were far enough over that it wouldn't have been an issue. But uh, throws a little bit of, you, you know, uh, some worry into all this. This is though when you really want to start paying attention because this is when it gets interesting. We mount a late race charge on the 91 and uh, you guys will see where it gets away from me. Hopefully that doesn't happen to Tanner Holmes here. We're going back green. Tyler, CB, Tanner Holmes back under I remember how excited I was. I was right there and I knew if I could just get to his outside, I'd get him. Right there with Tyler CB, but gotta find a way by him. Jesse Caldwell trying to show his Just needed to run the top a little better. I'm kind of not as good as I probably would be now, obviously. I was so new. But looking back, if I would have ran the top a little different, I would have definitely got right by him. 17 laps down, 8 laps remaining, and your top two still going at it in the front of the field. Tanner Holmes not quite able to get alongside of him. This kid is something to watch for right here. Tanner Holmes all over a veteran. Tyler right there has been doing this for so long, looking for his first career victory. Tanner Holmes in his rookie season is pushing around, looking for his first career victory as well. Five laps to go. We are right there. The Watching this back, I want to be like, pass him, pass him, pass him. Right like, now, you Tyler think it's going to be a different so outcome. You would think, him. man, I'm right there. Tyler CD trying to pay the tire bill on the bottom side. Tanner Holmes, he's selling some t-shirts up top behind them. Phenomenal racing Holmes surface, too. Jesse Caldwell. Next time by two laps to go. This might be where yeah, it goes wrong. Laps to go and they're side by side into turn number three. Tanner Holmes right there knocking on the door. Two laps to go. Oh no. And Tanner Holmes spins around, backs in the wall, and the yellow flag comes out. I, I obviously knew that was coming. Unbelievable. For anybody that's wondering what happened, like how did you just spin out like that? Outlaw carts have a left front brake, and at the time, I was using my front brake a ton. Absolutely just trying to keep the car right on the crease. You use the front brake to kind of keep the car from sliding up or, you know, keep it in the certain line you want to run. And since I was a little bit faster than the 91, I was probably trying to slow myself down a little bit to try not to get into them. And just at the time, I used my front brake way too much, and pretty much it locked up. And if you're an outlaw car driver, you know when you lock up the left front brake, there's no saving it. There's no just half spinning or whatever. You are 100% gonna spin out and uh, back it straight into the fence like I did. Let's hear what the announcers have to say. What, what a heartbreaker. I was just gonna say, what a heartbreaker. I would agree. But Tanner Holmes, that kid absolutely putting on a show, running in the second spot. Last year's 250 intermediate champion moving up to the open class as a rookie. This one still stings today. Races, and racing with one of the best in the business, Tyler Seavey, at, for the, at the front of the field with two laps to go. Here's some GoPro footage of uh, the event because you can watch this vlog on my YouTube channel. I'll link it in the description. All of this footage, uh, I was vlogging at the time, so you can look back. 
Look at how far GoPros have came. The audio is terrible. But some great in-car footage. We're right there on the 91. You can see the run we're getting on him, just entering the corner. We're right there, and he's starting to make some mistakes. I mean, we're almost wheel tapping. And boom, you can see what I did. I just I grabbed way too much brake. I was as close as I had ever been. Another angle. Everyone's just throwing their arms up. So that is that. Uh, pretty disappointing. Like I said, there's a handful of races. And I think if you're a racer in your career, if you've been doing it for a long time, and I bet the guys that have been racing 30 or 40 years have an even longer list. But for myself, I have races that I think back. Sometimes you're just laying in bed at night and you're like, man, how did I lose that or what went wrong? And this is definitely one of those races. One, it was gonna be my first career open win. It was gonna be in my own car. As many of you guys know now, I have an awesome opportunity to race for Factory QRC. So all six of my open wins at Red Bluff have been with car owner Jimmy Elledge and also him on the wrenches. I was racing with my dad at the time, also at being the Tyler Wolf Memorial. Just so many factors made it such a special race and unfortunate that I choked it. But the story does have a happy ending. The following season in 2018, we actually won the Tyler Wolf Memorial in the open division with an exciting late race pass on Chase Hill. So we have won this event before and that's one of the clips you guys have seen numerous times on the channel because what an exciting battle it was. So wanted to kind of hype you guys up with an old Tyler Wolf Memorial video. This season is gonna be incredible at Red Bluff. I absolutely love Outlaw Carts and I hope you guys have the same love for them that I do because this is what I grew up doing. Every single weekend, didn't matter what racetrack we were at, we were just racers and we loved running the go-karts. If you guys have any questions about specifics on Outlaw Carts, I would love to answer them down in the comment section down below. I know there's something that's very big on the West Coast, but not in other parts of the country. So if you guys are interested in getting started, definitely reach out to me, send me a message on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email, whatever. I definitely love to respond to you. And if you guys would love to get an Outlaw Cart yourself, check out QRC Carts. I'll link them at the top of the description. They support me and it'd be awesome if you guys support them. One quick thing before we end the video, I have some new merchandise that just dropped on the website. If you guys are a big fan of Carly and I, this is the merch you're gonna wanna get. We got a Holmes Racing sweatshirt. We got Carly on there, we got the Sprint car on there, we got the Outlaw card on there, and then Holmes Racing with the 18T and the 22C. I'll even zoom out just a little bit for you. And then on the front, we got Holmes Racing, and I know a lot of you guys are a huge fan of the gray, so I made sure to get them in gray this time, and like I said, they are available in a hoodie. So anyway, that is gonna end today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. That was so much fun to watch that footage back, even though it hurts a little bit inside. It truly does. But uh, you know, those are the races that make you better and make you stronger. Like I said, the following year, we come back and win that race. So anyway, I'll see you guys all this weekend at the Tyler Wolf Memorial for the 2020 uh, event. I just wanna say once again, thank you to all you guys. Because of you, I get to live my dream. I hope you guys are having fun following along with me on this journey. But uh, man, 2020 has been an insane year for so many different reasons, but it's been cool that you guys have really been enjoying the content lately that we've been putting out on the channel. So if you guys wanna keep following along, make sure you slap a like on this video, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get to 40,000 subscribers. And we are gonna be chasing our second career Tyler Wolf Memorial victory this Saturday night at the Red Bluff Outlaws. Tune in on Fast4 Media to watch it all live. We'll see you there. Deuces.